Hey guys, I told you I would show you some content with the new 90 FPS camera, and today's the day. I've been testing this for a couple weeks, and I sent it off to Neukel to go test it and really push it to the limit, because um, that's what he does. So I'll be showing you some uh, latency measurements I've done uh, to confirm that the camera is indeed working at 90 FPS and that the latency is about 13 milliseconds for a full frame. That is pretty unprecedented. Analog uh, is going to be doing at best maybe 18 milliseconds glass to glass. Um, so now digital for the first time has gotten down to 13 or 14 milliseconds, so faster than analog uh, is able to do with the full field. Yeah, so this is a big deal. Um, it's the first time a fixed latency digital system has been able to actually beat analog at fixed latency uh, frame rate and delay. And that absolutely does give you a competitive advantage. I mean, you're, you're shaving up to a foot off of a turn when entering a turn around a gate at a high speed. And uh, it, it all does add up. And having that be fixed latency, not wandering around, is, is really key to everything. It's as important as the high frame rate. Having that ultimate consistency compared with a high frame rate is exactly what we need as racers. Now, I think you won't notice it in the video here because you're just going to be watching a 60 FPS video on YouTube. Also, it's, it's really not something that you will notice if you're just watching the content. You're only going to notice this when you fly it yourself and you go from 90 FPS back to 60 FPS. You will, you will notice it. Um, Michael has said, uh, I don't ever want to fly 60 FPS again. <laughs> it's dead to me, something to that effect. And uh, yeah, I think that's just going to be the way it is. It'll just ruin you and you will have to fly 90 FPS going forward. So as I stated before, um, I could feel like I could enter turns um, with better direction and I could exit a turn with uh, better precision. Um, everything just feels tighter and snappier. Uh, pretty cool. You'll have to just try it for yourself. For freestyle, I don't think this will affect you that much. Honestly, I think 60 FPS is enough for everybody uh, with the latency being consistent the way it is. For people that are doing um, S-Bang, 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 uh, I think that you're going to benefit from being able to do tighter moves, tighter, more precise moves. Um, that's what more frames get you, and having that tight fixed latency gets you, is just really, really tight, present control. Um, not all about racing. It's really about having the smoothest video possible. The video you're going to see uh, is from unfinished, RF cards and the goggles, so it's a little bit noisier than it should be. You'll see some blocking that shouldn't be there. And then the other thing you'll notice is that the camera actually has some horizontal stripes that are present in the image, um, and that's that's due to a, a power noise issue on the sensor that's getting worked out for the production version of the camera. So don't uh, pixel peep too much on those particular things. Just try to look at the macro image. Um, take a look at how it's really pretty good resolution still, and the colors and, and contrast are excellent. A huge step up from analog. And of course, we get that 90 FPS, which is one and a half times the frame rate. Okay, so we got the super secret 90 hertz camera in here. And it's going through Blinky. And then what is that? That is 11 milliseconds or so for the 
off of the frame to the full yep. brightness. This is the frame time. Yep, and then that's 13.37 milliseconds for a whole frame uh, from from uh, the LED going on to get seeing it. So crazy. And then we can uh, turn it off. So that's pit mode. And then I'll turn it on. So VTX to turn on, and then it locks right in. <laughs> Pretty sweet. So what uh, what were we saying about the um, the PLL and stuff like that, and comparing it to analog? Uh, it's digital, so the video sync's gonna be a lot more clear than recovering the V sync from a like an NTSC or PAL signal. Smooth video. On the left is the point that the LED turns on, and then you can see the light starts to gradually fill up the whole display. That's what that angled line is until it reaches full brightness of the display with everything lit up. So we got three milliseconds at the beginning, going up to about 13 and a half, 14 milliseconds for one full uh, d delay. 90 FPS is 11 milliseconds total. So here's some of Neukel's flying. I mean, you know he's a really fast pilot. I, I think uh, you might agree that the flying I'm gonna do is a little faster. Here, here, here you go. So yeah, here, back to Neukel, uh, obviously he needs a little bit more practice to keep up with me. Nah, nah, I, I'm sure you, uh, <laughs> you know, I was just showing Neukel's footage there. Uh, dude is amazingly talented. Um, I'll just give you a little walkthrough on my thoughts of this camera so far. Um, like I've been saying, the way you can lock on to an entrance and an exit to a move is uh, quite a bit snappier than what I could do with 60 FPS. Uh, I think the camera uh, quality actually looks pretty good except for the uh, horizontal banding that you are seeing from the sensor noise that's getting resolved in the production version of this camera. Overall, I'm really pleasantly surprised by the lack of the apparent reduction in resolution going to this 4x3 90 FPS mode. Here's a few more clips of Neuko flying, so you can really see this camera at its full potential. I'm gonna have some of my thoughts, closing thoughts and details on this system at the end of the video, so hang in there. Couple more points on the camera. The one that I tested here is actually a micro camera and the production version is a nano camera with an M8 lens. It does have a taller body though, so it's gonna be 14 millimeters wide by 18 millimeters tall um, with an M8 lens. And that's how they had to do everything to package it to get it to all fit. So 
should be a pretty robust camera. It's going to fit into all the major uh, nano racing frames like light switch and all the others of that category. It's going to be uh, available for a few people to fly at multi-GP champs coming up in October. And I'll be there uh, participating in sport class. That's the slower class of pilots. And I'll be cheering on all of the, uh, the really fast guys in pro class.